Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Jay, and I'm here in the beautiful sanctuary at Christ the King. And today we're going to start a new series on the sacraments. We're going to look at uh, Holy Communion. We're going to look at baptism. Today let's start with Holy Communion. These are things you've probably seen uh, most of your life if you've been in the church. You've seen uh, the, uh, the paten or the plate, and on there is going to be a communion wafer. Now, this is a giant communion wafer that would be used by a pastor to... Uh, break up and distribute to uh, their fellow worship assistants, you know, people that are helping with communion. And then, of course, you've got the cup, uh, normally filled with wine, sometimes filled with grape juice. And what is this all about? Well, Martin Luther tells us in his small catechism some things about the Lord's Supper. He calls it the sacrament of the altar. And here's what he writes. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ under the bread and the wine instituted by Christ himself for Christians to eat and drink. What we believe is that Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and wine. Isn't that interesting? We really don't go into how it happens because we don't know. Uh, it's a mystery, and uh, as Lutherans, we don't try to unravel that. Uh, why do we believe that this bread and this wine is the body and blood of Christ? Well, we believe it because he says that it is. And as we trust him, we get uh, what he promises. You know, think about it this way. If you were in a burning building, uh, you were unfamiliar with that building, and someone came up and said, you know, I know the way out. I've worked here for years. Take my hand. Take my hand. I can lead you safely to the exit. Well, if you took their hand, you would be led to that exit into safety. But you might say, no, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't trust you. I don't know you. And because you didn't trust, because you didn't take that person's hand, you might perish in the fire. So communion is where we say, Lord, I trust you. I believe that this wine, I believe that this bread is truly your presence. And I'm going to take it. I don't understand it, but I'm going to trust you and I'm going to take it. So that's what communion is. And of course, he talks about where it's written. Uh, the holy evangelist Matthew, Mark, Luke, and St. Paul write thus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it all for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. So he goes on, What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? The words given for you. And shed for you for the forgiveness of sin, show us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in the sacrament through these words. Now, I had a confirmation student ask me one time, said, uh, Pastor, why do we need the, the, uh, the forgiveness that comes in Holy Communion if at the very beginning of the service we had confession and forgiveness? And what I said to that student was, I said, think about it this way. You can tell someone you love them. It's nice to hear, and, and they're going to like to hear that. But you can also show them how much you love them by helping them, by caring for them. Uh, this is like God giving you flowers. He's told you that he loves you. He's told you that you are his, but this is like God giving you flowers. He's presenting you something physical to say, look, this is a sign of just how much I care about you and how strong I want your life to be. And he concludes this segment. He says, because where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Where there is forgiveness of sins, there's also life and salvation. What does that mean? Well, our sin separates us from God. God doesn't go anywhere. If you feel like God is present, guess who, or God is absent, guess who moved? You did, because God is always there for us. But our sin alienates us from God. It causes us to hide from God, as Adam and Eve did in the garden. And so forgiveness brings us back into fellowship with God. And where God is, there is life and salvation. And so that's what is so precious about Holy Communion. I mean, through the bread, uh, through the cup, uh, Christ brings us back into the family, forgiving our sins and reuniting us with one another and with our Heavenly Father. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the amazing gift of the Lord's Supper, the gift of Holy Communion, the gift of the Eucharist, all those different names. But Lord, they all mean the same thing, that you loved us enough to come down in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, he gave his disciples and he gives us a way to be united with him 
and with each other, a way to receive a physical sign of forgiveness so that we can live lives of strength and of service. Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for we ask it in his holy name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great Monday and a good week.